Hey y'all, my name is Kayla Mary and this video is going to be about self-care and some of its misconceptions and kind of how to take care of yourself. It's kind of self-explanatory, but like I go in depth. It's not just like, oh yeah, take a shower once in a while, even though you're not going out anywhere or take some aesthetic pictures. It's a little bit more than that. So subscribe if you want to hear any more of this type of content. Like if you like this video. So as we all know, 2020 has been kind of hectic, terrible, um, a plethora of, a plethora, I can't say that word, a plethora of words actually fits into the description of 2020. And it feels like it's taking forever because so much has happened. So that's why I wanted to make a video about self-care and what to do regarding our inner selves to combat all of the negativity that's going around. To be fair, in real life, I am not the most positive person and I'm kind of trying to work on that. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is what is self-care? And at the surface level, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, taking care of yourself. It's not that hard of a concept to grasp, but the ways to take care of yourself. Some people, it's a little bit harder because you want to better yourself at all times so you don't know how to take a break or you think that self-care is binging 10 seasons of any given series. Another question we have to address is why is self-care important? Well, I think it's important because to be a good, well-rounded person, you can't just be one extreme or the other. You can't just be a sloth or a couch potato or whatever. And you can't also burn yourself out too early. Like I, <laughs> I know it's silly to say, but I, I understand the feeling of burnout even though I'm just in high school. <sighs> it's also a good time of reflection to see where you are, where you want to be, and what steps you can take to achieve your goals. Time to get existential here. Self-care is also important because it can provide an escape from the daily grind that is blinding us to our individual goals in our ever so fleeting lives. So now that we know why self-care is important and what it is, I think it's fair to say that everyone needs aspects of self-care in their lives, including you, including me. And everyone has their own version of self-care. Again, posing the question, what is self-care? I think there are many definitions of self-care and some are more overarching that are good general tips for self-care and then there are also tips for self-care but it's not real i i think it's i think it's just to get views on instagram or likes or it's just to look aesthetic don't get me wrong something can be aesthetic and be long-term self-care if that's how you define it for yourself but i think there are way too many instagrams or twitter feeds that say oh yeah we're self-care we're we're based around self-improvement when it's really stuff like this or this or this where they're really just taking advantage of the trend of self-care to try and get popular or make money off of it like there are tons of products that are like oh yes self-care spa day something like that and really in the long term sense of self-care they don't really do anything other than line opportunists pockets who just see a market and they don't actually care about filling the soul with good stuff how I define Instagram self-care is people who are just taking advantage of 
the hashtag or the trend or posting about self-care when it's feeding a false image of what self-care really is. Pinterest is also a really good example of that. I think that social media in itself can pose as self-care or a break from the grind, like I was saying before. But really, I think that social media can be just as self-detrimental as it can be relaxing. Like, anything in excess is not good. So now that we've kind of ruled out that Instagram self-care that is not really self-care, not really beneficial, I think that long-term self-care is taking care of your inner needs, like drinking water, like that's great. It's taking care of your body or maybe a change to your style to make you feel any more confident. I think that is a good starting point for self-care. To me, long-term self-care is something that is a way to take care of yourself to improve your inner being incrementally. It's a journey. It's not really a uh, one and done. Okay, I did this one task. I am there. I'm self-cared. I'm living my best life. I think that True self-care is really a journey, and that may sound really cliche, but I, I don't think you can just achieve nirvana in just a spa day. Like, there are many little things that you can do that may not be the most Instagrammable that really can benefit who you are inside. And like I said at the beginning, this is different for everyone. So if I list something that really doesn't sound appealing to you, I'm just giving you my basis that really makes me happy and I think that it also betters myself. So for self-care, I think that it is good to have some, some parts of the aesthetic self-care involved in the long-term or true self-care. like. I think that you have to marry the two because I don't know if this is just me, but I like it when things are really pretty or really aesthetically pleasing. So if let's say my water bottle is pretty and I think that it's really cute, I'm probably more likely to look at it or keep it nearby and actually drink water out of it. I also think that tidying and cleaning and keeping uh well my room isn't the cleanest right now but i have it on my schedule to clean later as a form of self-care so i think that living in a clean space is also very 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 important to my individual well-being i spend a lot of time in my room so if my room is looking like a pigsty I will feel like the clutter around my room is occupying space in my brain, which leads to more stress and is not fun. So I have learned that keeping my room tidy is essential for me to be properly self-cared for. This is more of a general example, but sometimes doing makeup or doing some sort of art form helps. Lots of people like to do a rigorous facial routine. I mean, I have a morning and night routine for my face, and I think that is a good part of self-care. But like I was saying earlier, Instagram likes to focus on stuff like that to be able to push more products out to people so that they buy them and economy. Woo. You totally understood that. So I think that art is a great way to blow off some steam, whether that be doing your makeup, dancing, singing, anything like that, or drawing, of course. I think that really helps, but let's say you hate doing makeup or you're not the best singer and you always just judge yourself whenever you sing or anything like that. If it doesn't bring you joy, why are you gonna do it? If that's the same thing that I see on Instagram self-care pages, like 
if they recommend something that doesn't fit who you are, then don't do it. Like, if, if you aren't drawn to it, like, it's just a recommendation. You know yourself best. How do you expect an Instagram page to, oh yeah, tell you the exact recipe to self-care success when they don't know you? They don't know you as a person. They don't know where you've been, where you are. They're just giving recommendations, just like I am right now. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I wrote down uh, preparing a healthy yet delicious picnic. I've been wanting to do this for such a long time because I saw Best Dressed do like take herself out on a date to show that she loves herself and that she is worthy of love. And I thought that was amazing. Yeah, I like picnics and I have greenery in my backyard that I can totally utilize. So I would like to do that at some point. But yeah, make it healthy. Um, this is just for me because normally I feel kind of blah after I have something that's not the healthiest, like Oreos and milk. Oreos and almond milk, but yeah, Oreos and milk. Or like some vegan brownies. Like yeah, they're healthier than normal brownies, but I still feel a little bit you know, not the best. And like, you do you. If you want to have, if you want to eat some brownies and whatever, you do that. If that's a part of what you think will make you happy in the long run, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but it's always good to have a healthy balance. So if you haven't had like a brownie in a week, have that brownie, eat that brownie, savor that brownie, get some milk to go with that brownie because Milk and brownies are really good. But yeah, I think a balance is great. So like have some tofu and rice, but then have a dessert after. And that's totally fine. Like that sounds like a great picnic. I might do that. My next one was exercise. I, s I started exercising during quarantine. I mean, I am on the volleyball team at my school but I quit club volleyball this year. So I kind of stopped doing exercise other than like dancing in the school play, but I didn't dance much other than the opening number because I am Jafar. You don't see Jafar doing any kick lines. That would be uh, awesome to see Jafar and Iago have this little duet. That would be cute. But yeah, sorry for the tangent. <laughs> um, yeah, exercise. I started uh, exercising once quarantine happened and it makes me feel better especially bike riding i like bike riding because i feel like i'm exploring new places because i don't really leave my house ever so i didn't really know what my neighborhood was like <laughs> this sounds like i'm rapunzel like i've been in quarantine since birth um no i just am very much a homebody and yeah i don't go out much but I went bike riding and I did it like three days in a row and it was great and yeah I'm gonna do that today too because it's fun and it builds up my leg muscles getting ready for volleyball season yeah I also think that exercising your brain ooh nice segue exercising your brain is very important i've been doing enough act and sat prep a little too much for my liking but i still need to do more because i need it to be good scores for colleges to like me that's another story but it's fine i know lots of people hate summer reading projects but maybe go into it with an open mind or maybe read another book that you seem more interested in the three books that i am reading this summer are on screen right now so yeah one of these is required by my english class the other it's the entire high school that's reading it and the third is one of we had a list of optional books that we could read and that one was outliers by malcolm gladwell i have it right in my room so that i am reminded to read it beauty guru for books can you see that so yeah i'm reading that it's about 
um, successful people and I kind of want to focus on self-improvement if you couldn't tell like I'm doing this whole self-care thing so that I become ne less negative and so that I see the positivity in the world because yeah, I need to work on that. I remember one of my friends really recommended Malcolm Gladwell and his work. So I saw this book on the list. I went through all of the books on the list and there were like six that I couldn't choose from, but then I saw Malcolm Gladwell and I was like, ooh, I forgot. They recommended this guy to me. So far it's really good. It's kind of, instead of focusing on the unique traits that successful people have it focuses on like the little things about maybe their family their culture their upbringing their neighborhood so yeah i find it pretty interesting and another book i actually bought this book in washington dc and it makes me really happy very environmentalist even though there is a bunch more that i could do i want to keep working to be more green and use less plastic so yeah that can also be a thing that you turn to for self-care something that brings you joy so all those things that i said you can do it in like a roulette form some people don't have all day just to be like oh yes sunday my self-care day and that's totally fine you can just choose a handful or just choose one and you can do like any meeny miny mo you can do like a spinner like wheel of fortune but yes these are all recommendations i am no expert i am just trying to help people out and decipher what is real self-care and what is being pushed on us as a society and as teens who are very stressed spend lots of time on social media to combat that stress and then social media ends up bringing more stress but it's fine it's very fine totally fine everything's fine i think i also need to work on that i say it's fine a lot when it really isn't i feel like that little dog burning in the house you know that meme. Here are my closing statements. Self-care is a personal journey from which we are all at different starting points because we all have different noggins. I like the analogy that I made. Do with it what you will. It's like a hedge maze with multiple entrances, but we can always call out to like our little buddies and our support system when they're at different places. And when we're at different places, when we're a little bit lost, we can call out to them, ask them where they are, ask them to guide us a little bit, and then they can do the same if they need our help. We can ask how each other are doing, and yeah, it'll be friendship. Friendship! kind of the the one thing that i wish everyone to be able to take away from this is that self-care isn't always instagrammable and that's okay because self-care isn't for your followers it's not for anyone else but yourself it's a sacred place with the sole intention of bringing you joy peace and satisfaction Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. If you stayed till this point in the video, comment a palm tree because that's what I'm looking at right now. Is there a palm tree emoji? There is a palm tree emoji. Comment the palm tree emoji if you have stayed up till this point in the video. Subscribe if you wanna see more of my face talking about topics like this. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Bye y'all and have a great day.